What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 10 biggest regrets WWE wrestlers confessed. So, um, I'm guessing certain wrestlers have some type of regrets for you know, maybe, maybe not going through with a particular segment or maybe not being able to have a match with a particular wrestler. I know Stone Cold has said in the past that he regrets walking out uh, on Vince McMahon when Vince uh, initially wanted him to have a match with uh, Brock Lesnar or whatnot. He wanted uh, Brock Lesnar to go over, but I think uh, Stone Cold felt some type of way because it was on. It was going to be on like a random episode of Raw, not built up, not a pay per view. So he walked out, and uh, Stone Cold has said himself that he's regretted walking out on WWE, walking out on Vince like that. So uh, we're gonna check out. Maybe that's on the list. It, it could be on the list. We will check that out. Appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Let's get right into this one. Man. Pro wrestlers, particularly those who have had successful runs in WWE often like to reflect on their careers. In interviews, documentaries, and autobiographies, wrestlers have been known to speak out about regrets they've had about their time in the squared circle. These regrets can come from accepting a lackluster booking decision, or even can relate to the way the specific wrestler handled themselves behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the biggest regrets of WWE wrestlers. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. And subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, JBL, his behavior Ooh. towards Mauro Ronaldo. Mm. Mauro Ronaldo becoming the voice of SmackDown was a huge deal. For he sure. was a huge fan of the WWE product and he instantly turned into one of the most popular and acclaimed commentators WWE we ever We miss you, Mauro, on commentary, Unfortunately, man. Ronaldo had a shaky relationship with his SmackDown commentary partner, JBL, and this reportedly led to Ronaldo taking a leave of absence from WWE and eventually joining the NXT brand as their lead commentator. Ronaldo's close friend, Bass Rutten, claimed that JBL was excessively bullying him, and whilst Ronaldo claimed his issues in WWE were nothing to do with JBL, several stories of JBL's mm. prior antics surfaced, which certainly didn't present the former champion in the most positive manner. JBL would later come forward during an interview on the Rick Bassman Talking Tough show and stated that he deeply regrets anything he said to Ronaldo that may have caused distress. I did a rant on the show about, ah, they're calling Mauro the number one announcer. He's retweeted it, blah, blah, blah. 100% in character and people talk about that poll that I was so jealous of that poll that I went on TV and talked about it. That was just me being JBL on camera and I think Mauro took that the wrong way. I hope he realizes now that that was something that I did that was 100% in character. JBL would also state that he informed Mauro directly that he regrets about how he handled the situation. Mm. I walked across the parking lot and he was on his phone so I couldn't talk to him but I shook his hand. Just went across and shook his hand and he said, how are you doing man? I said, it's good brother and just left. Just to let him know that there was no ill intent, at least of me towards him. I regret the whole situation. I wish that Mara had known for sure. Number nine, Chris Jericho, not wrestling. Damn man, that was a big topic. People just felt like JBL was a bully. That was the reports going on. I am glad that he, had, you know, at least talked to him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, at least uh, address some things. Uh, not, sh I'm sure they probably not, not like best friends or anything like that. But as long as he, you know, uh, tried to, you know, bridge that gap and let him know that, uh, you know, he he didn't mean any uh ill towards him or whatnot. That's all you can do. But I do remember. JBL getting a lot of hate uh, back when this story was first being circulated uh, online. Wrestling Macho Man Randy Savage. Throughout his legendary career, Chris Jericho has wrestled virtually every major name imaginable. From past icons such as Hulk Hogan and The Rock to modern greats such as John Cena and Randy Orton. Mm -hmm. However, one wrestler that Jericho <laughs> never got to have a featured match against was Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, yeah! This is something that Jericho regrets about his career. In a tweet in June of 2023, Jericho stated, Man, I wish I would have gotten to work with Randy, one of my heroes for sure. Jericho versus Randy Savage would have been an epic feud. Oh yeah, that would have been quite interesting. That we never got to see it take place. 
Randy Orton not showing the WrestleMania 21 rehearsals. Mm. But during Randy Orton's early days in WWE, he had a ton of personal problems that unfortunately filtered into his attitude and behavior as a top WWE star. Mm -hmm. In 2005, Orton was given the opportunity of a lifetime as he was set to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 21. Only a select few stars have been given this huge honor, and Orton, due to his personal issues, decided to outright miss the planned rehearsal for his match with the dead man. Damn. In a 2020 episode of WWE Untold, Orton admitted how much he regretted missing the planned rehearsal. Let's just say I got into a little trouble, didn't get much sleep, just in case my kids are watching. <laughs> I keep in mind this is my second WrestleMania, I'm 24, I'm being given the world, my dad is there, Take is there. I got down there just as they were finishing up and they were walking out. I'm working with The Undertaker for a year, and it all started off with me missing rehearsal for the biggest match of the year. The multi-time WWE Champion stated, A lot of my people may have opinions about me early in my career, but nobody considers myself more of an asshole than I do. So take, if you're watching, thank you for not bitching me out, cursing me out, and chokeslamming my ass to hell after I missed that rehearsal. Damn. It was probably one of my biggest regrets in the business, letting you men down that night. Number seven. And... It's been documented that Randy Orton definitely had a lot going on behind the scenes. And uh, he just wasn't there. He wasn't where the company needed him to be in a mature sense or whatnot. And it's it's cool to be able to reflect and be like, yeah, I was kind of an ass. I, I, I wasn't all there. I wasn't ready to be at the top of the company yet. And to have that type of uh, reflection, you know on you know i mean he was young 24 being a, being one of the top premier talents in wwe people dream of doing something like that getting paid good money you know like people dream of stuff like that so he was a young kid and he obviously learned from it and grown from it but at that time man randy orton was uh it came off like he was quite difficult to work with from time to time kane the half haircut one of the most shocking moments of the Ruthless Aggression era saw the unmasking of Kane. This allowed the Kane character to develop even further as Glenn Jacobs believed that the masked version of the demonic character had grown stale. Whilst Jacobs was all in favor of removing the mask, he wasn't anticipating keeping the unkempt, half-shaved head look. That's the Hall wild. of Famer would discuss his one regret from this memorable segment with Stone Cold Steve Austin. I actually was a little nervous though because I hadn't told my wife about this. Oh, my wife no. loved my long hair. Oh. I wanted to see it and be shocked just like everybody else. And she was. So when I talked to her after the match, that didn't go very well. And they get about halfway through and Bruce Pritchard goes, Stop. I need to show Vince. I should have said, Right then, keep going. And of course, in the heat of the moment, I'm like, Oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. And then yeah, I'm sitting there like, Wait a second. I got to go look like Outback with this. I gotta go pick my kids up at school. <laughs> Number six, Seth Rollins, the reunion. Damn. He's like, all right, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. That nigga shit was pushed back. Woo! <laughs> That's all for the business. All for the business. <laughs> the Shield. The Shield were immensely popular during their initial run, and when WWE disbanded the stable in 2014, Legendary it moment. seemed like a certainty that they would eventually reform the group in years to come. This eventually happened in 2017, and whilst the reunion was a success, it didn't feel the same, and the magic mm -mm. had been somewhat lost. One of the major issues with the reunion was that WWE had failed to create a compelling rival for the group, and they were facing a randomly put together collection of stars. Mm -hmm. WWE attempted the reunion once again in 2018, but at this point, it was clear that fans were fine with the three main eventers having their own unique storylines. Yep. It wasn't just the WWE fans who felt like the Shield reunions didn't hit the mark. As Shield member Seth Rollins has spoken at length about his regrets with the reunions, and Rollins went into detail during an interview with Bleacher Report. I guess one regret would be managing some of the reunions a little bit better. Some of that was out of our control, and there was nothing we could do. It's not ideal to have Kurt Angle in a Shield costume, but yeah. desperate times call for desperate measures. So he made the best of it, and there's something to be said for putting people in that role and being able to have the equity to do that. Number five, Triple H. Nope. Yeah. Um, it's it's the thing is they weren't bad. Kind of what WrestleMania said is it's just the feuds they were having didn't help. What worked for the Shield when they were feuding with Evolution is that's a formidable faction going against another formidable faction. It worked. When they reunited, it was cool. It was awesome to see, but. 
they're feuding against people that are not as interested in seeing the shield go against to be honest with you so maybe if the feud was a little bit better who they were going against it probably would have been better i remember it i was like yeah this was cool you know it, it really was a way to get roman over that's that's really what it was if you want to be honest with you honest if you take out just the the okay feud they were having at the time it was to get roman over that's it that's that's why it, it didn't have that same you know effect because when roman was with the shield the first go around he was over like people liked him but then when they did the reunion a few times it we we knew what they were doing is to get roman over and it at the time it just wasn't working not facing the rock at wrestlemania 16 the feud between Triple H and The Rock was one of the standout feuds of the Attitude Era and the two should have collided in the main event of WrestleMania 16. Instead though, WWE booked yeah. a McMahon in every corner fatal four-way match which involved the game, The Rock, Big Show and the seemingly retired Mick Foley. Though the match failed to meet WrestleMania main event standards mm -hmm. and WWE eventually booked the match for Backlash yep. in 2000 in what turned out to be an utter classic. Facts. Whilst appearing on Logan Paul's Impulsive podcast, he discussed his regrets in WWE and this led to the game discussing how much he regretted not facing the Great One in the main event of WrestleMania 16. Triple H even stated that he wishes he and The Rock collided in an Iron Man match on the grandest stage. My only regret of the whole thing with The Rock is in 2000, we were poised to have a match at WrestleMania 1 on 1. I think that would have been an epic thing for, for sure. both of us in that moment. The timing of Taker's return and Austin's return, and Austin wasn't quite ready yet, so they pushed the WrestleMania match. A couple of months later, we would have the 1 on 1 Iron Man match that we wanted to have at WrestleMania. Unfortunately for me, I just feel that's the one thing we got to this unbelievable heated long-term rivalry and then mm -hmm. never got a payoff on the biggest platform possible. For sure. Number four, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, for sure. Definitely that if it was just them by themselves, Triple H and The Rock, man, that shit would have went crazy. But it went crazy at Backlash, but that should have happened at WrestleMania. Austin, not wrestling Brock Lesnar. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this definitely should have been on the list. No. In one of the most infamous walkouts in WWE history, Stone Cold Steve Austin decided to no-show an episode of Raw in 2002 when he was booked to lose to Brock Lesnar. Austin had zero issues with putting over the young star, but he believed that the match should have been built up and then Austin would do the honors. Mm -hmm. Austin has talked time and time again about his regrets when it comes to the way he handled this situation. He would even mention in his Hall of Fame speech, so it was evidently bothering the WWE legend years after the walkout. Whilst Austin clearly holds a lot of tender feelings towards the 2002 incident, Lesnar has never seemed to remotely care about Austin failing to put him over. While some wrestlers would hold a grudge, this isn't the type of human being that Lesnar is, and mm -hmm. thankfully, Lesnar and Austin have maintained a healthy friendship for almost two decades now. Yeah, nah, I mean, Lesnar was going to be Lesnar regardless if Stone Cold put him over or not, as we've seen. But I figured this would be on the list because Stone Cold has said this numerous of times he regret not you know he regrets you know walking out and not putting over um brock at the time number three the undertaker not wrestling andre the giant since retiring in 2020 the undertaker has given endless public interviews about his life and career and in one specific interview with ariel helwani the dead man stated that one of his biggest regrets is that he never got to wrestle andre the giant when I came in, he was right there at the end, and he was working just a little bit. His knees and back were really, really bad. But he always had this idea, the Undertaker said. I'd come into the dressing room and I'd say, Hey boss, how are you doing today? And he would say, Oh good kid, one day me and you will make big money. Wow. I was like, really boss? He goes, yeah, I've got a good idea. I said, oh well, let me hear about it. No, no, no. He was so old school like he would never tell me. Uh... Never got to work with him. That is a huge regret. I would have loved to just be in the ring with Andre. Nah, that would have been that would have been uh, legendary for uh, the Undertaker's career. And the fact he's like, nah, I'm not gonna tell you. He, he old school like that. Like, nah, nah, nah. You'll find out when when you're supposed to find out. And unfortunately, we never got that matchup. Number two, John Cena retrospective hypocrisy. Oh. One of the main focal points in the rivalry oh. between Cena and The Rock was Cena's consistent references Very interesting. to the Rock's in Hollywood. Cena was of the belief that The Rock abandoned WWE in favor of Hollywood and he was extremely critical of The Rock's mishaps in the movie industry. Fast forward to a decade after the feud yeah. and Cena himself has semi-retired and is now a big name in the movie industry. Naturally, fans have called out Cena's hypocrisy, but Cena himself has admitted the total hypocritical behavior. 
He would reflect on this during an appearance on the Happy Sad Confused podcast, saying, I got selfish in me, living in WWE at the point and not having any concept of growth or someone else's perspective, I took Dwayne's comments about the business as not genuine. He said, my view was that if you love something, be there every day. Like, what a hypocrite I am, because I still love WWE and mm-hmm. I can't go all the time. And I just didn't see that. I was so selfish. Instead of going like, hey man, I'd like to try to do this thing to hook you back in and maybe we can collaborate and really make it big. I was just like, F this, I'm calling this dude out. Mm-hmm. This is a moment. You give me an opening, I'm going to kick the door in. And I was diligent and I understand why he got upset. And yep. number one, show Michaels coming out of retirement. Yep. And it's, it's, the thing is about that feud was there was a lot of blurring of the lines. Like the rock was upset with John because of how he was coming at him. Like how he, you know, viewed him leaving for Hollywood. And then ultimately he ends up doing the same thing years later. Um, so I do appreciate John being able to realize he was being a hypocrite because he's doing the very same thing now that the rock's been doing for a very long time or whatnot yes he's back as of recent um but obviously it's not going to be a long-term thing or whatnot so i do appreciate him being able to you know be self-aware like yep i was i was being a hypocrite you know i I, I had a hypocritical statement not understanding that obviously the rock knows his movie career wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for wwe it's as simple as that same thing with john and if you want to be honest, it really kind of goes back to Hulk Hogan, you know, being the guy to really be in the 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 movie spotlight, TV spotlight that kind of got other studios wanting to check out these superstars, these wrestlers like, yeah, let's get them in the movie. These guys are, you know what I'm saying, they're talented, they're, they can act, it seems like, they can hold a, a crowd's attendance or a crowd's, like, uh, you know, attention or whatnot, so it... It's one of those things where Rock being a big movie star c- kind of helps John Cena become a big movie star, you know? So it, it's it's like a trickle-down effect. So, But yeah, man, very, very cool of him to at least be self-aware of that. And obviously, this is a good number one. Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement. He shouldn't have never come out of retirement, ever. The beloved Shawn Michaels had the perfect retirement in 2010. He retired at a classic match against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 26, but eight years later, HBK made the controversial decision to come out of retirement. Oh, well, he would team with bro. Triple H to take on Taker and Kane at the Crown Jewel event, but the match itself received widespread criticism, and fans were incredibly disappointed that HBK would come out of retirement for oh, an easy payday. Well, In the did, years that bro. followed, he's been critical of the match, and HBK would be asked by the New York Post if he regrets accepting the match. And this is what he had to say. Uh, I do. I had no idea that from Mark's standpoint he was looking at as that might be one he could walk away on. That's something that I think to myself, oh my goodness, I wish I would have known that. For me, it was fun. It was just a chance to be with my buddies. All I can do is apologize to the guys. Well, there you have it, folks. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, rec- I, I just wish it would have ended at WrestleMania 26 and that would have been it. That's all I've ever wanted. It just, he ended it at back to back class matches Wrestlemania 25 against The Undertaker Wrestlemania 26 ended it there it was the perfect send off that's it ah man bro I just uh, <laughs> hey man that's that Saudi money <laughs> I just wish he would have just hung it up stayed hanging it up it was cool to see I'm not gonna lie oh shit he's coming out of retirement and if there's anybody that grants him that opportunity to come out of retirement, it's The Undertaker. But he, in retrospect, he probably definitely should have just said, nah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a stay retired. I don't care how much money you throw at me. It's just, you know, you don't want to be one of those wrestlers that just keeps coming out of retirement because it, it loses its effect when you say, I'm going to hang up the boots and then you come back and <laughs> unhang up the boots, you know? So comment down below. Let me know, Art, what's some other wrestlers, you know, if you've heard on a podcast or on a show or whatnot, um, other wrestlers having some regrets that weren't on this list or whatnot that you guys can remember or talk about. Let me know down below. I love getting these little factoids about wrestlers in their careers. So let me know some other wrestlers that you know have said they've had some personal regrets in the wrestling business. 
But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still young. Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See you on the next one. Peace.